Welcome to the Catholic Influencers Podcast. We are celebrating episode number 18, almost the end of the season. Georgia and Alyssa, <laughs> but this week we have Georgia who's leading us and who's putting a bit of balance in what I say because I tend to talk a lot so Georgia can put some sort of soften things a little bit with my enthusiasm. How are you doing this week Georgia? <laughs> I'm good thanks Father Rob. Very good. Excited to be here again. Yeah and you're in a new location. Yes I moved location. It's got a little bit of uh, more room for me to for my hands that move so far when I talk. Yeah. And also a bit of better lighting and just um yeah it's just better for all the technology we've got set up. And your new location is what, two meters away from where your previous location <laughs> exactly. was? Just right down the road, like literally three steps. <laughs> Just little turn. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Change awesome is as that. good as a holiday. This and since we can't have a holiday for a long time, well, a plane. You move two meters and it's a change. <laughs> <laughs> it's change. It's clever. That is change. Change. All change is good change. Sometimes it's a change that we don't understand and makes us miserable. But at the end of the day, you know, they're always um, some people find it easy to deal with change. Other people find it really difficult. Um, I love change. Anything love that's it? yeah, I love change. But mind you, as long as I have my constants in my life, like my prayer, as long as I have my exercise and I have, uh, my isolation as well from people as an introvert yeah. while well, you're the opposite you need people i'm the opposite <laughs> i'm like people <laughs> <laughs> come here people come let yeah. me talk to you <laughs> especially during this lockdown like i would just make friends with anyone at the shop i could like the coffee girl the you know the girl that serves me coffee in the morning i just yeah so but with change i'm a bit different i i'm a bit funny with change i don't like it when things change too quickly i, I need notice i'm yes. spontaneous but I need notice for, for big change. I get a bit freaked out by it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I suppose it depends what change it is. And sometimes yeah. Yeah, we, we, some change shakes our stability, shakes our, um, our, our well-being even. And this is why we need so, some stable things in our lives. For me, it's Jesus, this relationship with Jesus. You know, I just yeah. tweeted this a couple of days ago. I said, mm -hmm. you can have all the world, or you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. How, how, like, how, what a crazy prayer to that pray that. Prayer. What a crazy prayer. But the thing is that Jesus is the only stability that mm. I don't want to change. You know, his yes. love for me and, again, my love for him as imperfect as it is. Yes. So. Yeah, if you've this, got Jesus and you've got exercise, then the other things that are, like, always going like that. Yeah, change, Jesus, kind of exercise, community. That's right. Yeah. So what are the, I'm, I'd be curious to know what the pillars, uh, comment, tell us on your social media, what are the pillars in your life that uh, mm. don't change? You know, some of us say family, but family changes, things change in our family, mm -hmm. health changes, but health there are changes, certain pillars, work changes. work changes, but what are the stabilities in your life? What have you found in your life that has been mm. consistent? And mm. I have another question yeah. here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this. Georgia, I'm going to start off with the question of a dad joke, and then I'll give you the answer later, okay? Okay. So we'll find the answer okay. to this dad joke later throughout this episode. What do you call okay. cheese that isn't yours? I don't know. Okay, find out later. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out later. Okay. I like so, cheese. But... You like cheese. <laughs> when, um, let's go to the gospel, Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. This is a, a longish reading, a, a reading that we are, are familiar with. Um, just listen, listen, listen in the context. We're going to explain the context to you. We're going to explain exactly what Jesus was meaning by this. And so that you can go to Mass on Sunday, online or in person, hopefully in person, and you can understand yeah. the scripture sometimes more, even more than the priest there. Maybe you yeah. can explain it to the priests yourself. Here we go. Yeah. I don't know how well the he'll take it, but anyway. <laughs> Let's read the Gospel. Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Okay, so it's the parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish, one took, the foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. 
Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the, buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Amen. Ooh. That's there you one. go. And it is a big one. And it is very often can be seen in the Western world as a story that Jesus made up. But it actually wasn't a story that was made up. It was something mm -hmm. very common. And it was something that people would have understood again there in the context of when Jesus said it. But also mm -hmm. in modern Palestine as well, people would perfectly understand what Jesus was saying here. Georgia, tell us a little bit about context. Why did Jesus bring up the story? Well, it was to talk about what, like weddings in those days or celebrations in those days, they went for a week. So they weren't just like an overnight thing that the weddings today, the, f the first person that is there is the groom and the bride is the one that we're waiting for. Whereas in these days, it was the opposite. The yep. bride was there waiting for the groom and the groom could come at any time. That's and right. there wasn't an invitation. It was the sound of a drum that brought people to this celebration wedding banquet. So they heard oh. the drum and they, they had to be ready at any time. Exactly, exactly. And right? so like, th that is right, the <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> so that is the, the um, today we cannot understand it because it's usually the groom. I, uh, I do a lot of weddings and I'm, one of the things that I do is I keep on talking to the groom while we're waiting for the bride, trying to keep him calm because yeah. he's usually really calm. I go and get him some water from the sacristy and do make sure he has a handkerchief. Get, I talk to the groomsmen to try and make sure that they're keeping the groom calm. But yes. in Palestine, even today, it is different. The bride is the first to arrive. She's waiting there in the car outside or she's waiting there and she's with her bridesmaids, with the mm -hmm. virgins. And mm -hmm. as she's there, the virgins, the bridesmaids are playing music, they're dancing, the friends of the bride are all there, they're celebrating mm -hmm. and they're waiting for this groom to come. But the thing is, the groom could come in 10 minutes, the groom could come tonight, the groom could come in 10 hours, they don't know. But the yeah. point was, there was a celebration before the celebration. So there was like a sort of a party, an informal party with the bride there, her makeup going dry, stale. I don't know, whatever <laughs> your makeup goes. Hair's and going everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And she's waiting there for this bridegroom. But then all of a sudden, from the distance, she starts to hear a drum beat. Mm -hmm. And so this is what the groom would do. He'd leave his house and he'd mm -hmm. travel, travel the longest route possible. And he'd have an entourage of people that were playing the beat of the drum. Now, mm -hmm. the bridesmaids had been dancing and had been playing for um, hours and hours. So to keep the bride calm? Is that, yeah. That's right. And to, okay. for, to keep them distracted and to wait as yeah. they were waiting. Uh -huh. And so it wasn't, it wasn't abnormal for the bridesmaids and even the bride to have mm -hmm. a nap. To rest <laughs> and all of a sudden they hear this drum beat and so the reason was that people would know that the, the groom is coming that the groom is on his way and people would stop what they're doing that stop their work wash their face and follow the groom to this big big party that you said like lasted a whole week yeah. and that come in and then that shut the door so this is the story that Jesus was talking about except the bridesmaid did have a nap there but there was also a law in Palestine that said that you could not walk the streets at night without an oil lamp. It was illegal, like it is illegal to walk the streets of Victoria without... Without a mask on. <laughs> without a face mask. <laughs> yes, so you have to go home and pick up your face mask before you go any further. Mm -hmm. And it was the same with the oil lamp. So they had to have this oil lamp. So what happens in this story is... Well... Five of them are ready. Five of the. Um, oh, I think it's important to say that um, the the bridegroom in this story is meant to represent Jesus, and the virgins to represent the Christian community. So it's you know being ready for when Jesus comes. That's important. That's correct. To preface, but uh, so five of the um, you know the virgins they're re they're ready. They've got their oil, and um, you know they're all good. And then the other five are not, and. They, they fall asleep and they wake up and their oils, their, their lamps are out. It's, they've got no oil to refill. 
and they're freaking out. And so the, the five that have lamps, they go off with the uh, bridegroom and they go into the party to the, the celebration and they're let in with the guests and then the others are outside saying, uh, so the others have to go off and get more oil. I get to fill up their lambs and then they come back and they say, let us in and then let us in, Lord, and say, no, I don't know you. I don't know exactly because you like you're not invited we have our, uh, the yeah. the reception's full the church is full i'm sorry you cannot come the doors closed yeah and they not only miss out on the service they also miss out on the wedding celebration but they also miss out on the whole week of of feasting of celebrating yes. what like how horrible it is because all because they were there they were they were willing but they weren't prepared, prepared. so what's jesus saying to be prepared yeah now, let's talk about the meaning. You alluded to the fact that it means um, it is, it's talking about Christians and it's talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think there are two, I think it's always important when we study the scriptures to understand two things. One is the local yes. meaning and the okay. second is the universal meaning. Now, the local mm -hmm. meaning is what Jesus was referring to there and then, okay? When he was talking, the local meaning in the context of his time, what was mm -hmm. he referring to? That's the, this is. The, Jewish people are the chosen people. Yes, exactly. And so this is mm -hmm. called the historical critical method. So we need to analyze mm -hmm. these two things, the local mm -hmm. and the university, the universal. So the local Jesus was talking about the Jewish people, that yeah. they were the chosen people of God. They were there. But what, what was wrong, mm -hmm. Georgia? They weren't prepared. Well, they're, they're, still, they're still not prepared. They're still not getting, he's a Messiah, he's, you know, all that. It's, they're not prepared. They're not ready. Is that right? They're not ready. It's not yes. So they're not understanding. They couldn't understand that Jesus was the gate, the way, the door, the groom that had arrived. But they were so distracted mm -hmm. and uh, uh, by mm -hmm. the festivities, by the waiting, that they missed the groom. So that's the local meaning. Now tell us uh, mm -hmm. again about the universal meaning of this. What does it mean for us today? The un. Mm. The universal. I'd say to, it's to stay awake. So you know, it's not like you know we've, we've got to, we know knowing Jesus is so important, but it's also having spiritual vigilance and knowing getting ready for the Lord when the Lord comes again. So you know, exercising things like you know diligence and prudence, because it says in Matthew twenty four forty two to forty four that no one knows the hour, the day, or the time that the Lord is coming. We never know. It could be tomorrow. It could be the next day. It could be in you know five years and. So we, we need to be ready. Yeah. Yes, and we have to always be ready. And what does it mean, again, to be ready? It's to keep our hearts ready and not to wait for mm -hmm. the last minute to turn to the Lord, you know? And mm -hmm. I think there are two things that we have to keep in mind. The first thing is that um, Jesus is trying to say in this universal meaning that something, uh, uh, theologically, um, he's saying that some things cannot be obtained at the last minute. You cannot obtain salvation at the last minute, live one way and then expect to live eternity another way. Yes. That we have to be prepared to live us, to allow ourselves to, to meet God, to live like God, to recognize mm -hmm. God. Now, so it doesn't mean that God cannot save us at the last minute. We know that there was a guy mm -hmm. saved at the last minute, the, the, the bad thief on the cross by Jesus' side. Right there at the end. <laughs> He, at the last minute, he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said, tonight you will be with me in paradise. So he was saved mm -hmm. at the last minute. But mm -hmm. we cannot depend on moments, last moments of grace, because we don't know. We don't know. So we have to live ready. That's the first thing that he's saying. Mm -hmm. the, <clears throat> the second thing he's saying, that certain things cannot be borrowed. Mm -hmm. You can borrow some things, but there are certain things you cannot borrow. You cannot borrow your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You cannot borrow just because your your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your wife, your husband is praying for you, doesn't mean that you're going to be saved. Like I believe in the power of prayer, yeah. but it is yours also. You cannot borrow the salvation mm -hmm. of other people, the relationship of Jesus with other people. So you can you can pray for someone else, like Saint Monica prayed for Saint Augustine, or but at the end of the day, Saint Augustine had to have the heart conversion exactly and he had Hearts to respond to, to grace Jesus. yeah exactly that's exactly right and just saying hey, my you know I've, i heard it say in malta we have a tendency to to things like that you know i go to a party 
And I'm, as a priest, I get exhausted when this happens, you know, like um, <laughs> I, I, whenever I go to parties, people often, often come up to me, you know, like a wedding reception and they say, oh, father, I used to be an altar boy or oh, father, my <laughs> uncle is a priest. And these are great things. I'm, I'm grateful for that. But it's yeah. like them trying to say, ah, oh, so I understand. I know Catholic culture. I, I never go to church. I don't go to mass. But my uncle's but, a priest. Yeah. So I'm going to heaven. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. <laughs> you can't Can't borrow. run off your uncle's coattails. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can't. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. No. <laughs> it's funny. You cannot borrow salvation. And you yeah. also, another, here's another thing that's interesting. You cannot mm -hmm. borrow things your relationship with god from the past now yeah that's interesting so i mm. I, I did all this stuff I've, I've had a break for four years i'm just you know i'm not really there i'm not praying i'm not doing anything for god but you know i, I did all this stuff before that's i i never thought of it like that but that's pretty interesting yes and just because mm. you follow jesus and had a relationship with jesus jesus once doesn't mean you have a relationship mm. with him today mm -hmm. and so we cannot borrow our salvation we cannot borrow redemption we cannot borrow heaven um mm -hmm. we, uh, get into heaven by borrowing our past relationship with god mm -hmm. Whew, tough That's, one difficult it is one. a tough one isn't it and i suppose like you know god knows our hearts at the end of the day like there can be things stopping us from you know um being exactly right with god but he knows our hearts and he journeys with us but we still have to be really making that effort you know like it's his grace but it's also what we're giving to him you know yes exactly yeah. and that brings us george i think to the topic already we're to the topic least, i feel i've been talking too much i'm gonna leave it with you now you can explain the topic <laughs> no you haven't been talking too much i think it's good okay so the topic today ladies and gentlemen no, i'm just kidding is faith or works faith or works but before we do that let's talk um we have a blessing and the dad joke now i'm going to give you the conclusion to that dad that joke first. okay so uh, the question i asked was what do you call cheese that isn't yours yeah what is it it's nacho cheese <laughs> i like it <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad joke. Nacho, bad joke. It's nacho cheese. I like nachos. It's nacho now cheese. I'm hungry. Now I want nachos. Here's another um, <laughs> dad joke that was given to us um, on Instagram as well. So again, mm -hmm. if you uh, have jokes to share with us, we're more than happy to, Send to them share them. Yeah. Here's a, uh, one from Yunen. Yunen says this. I tried to sue the airline for misplacing my luggage, but I lost my case. <laughs> That's good. I okay. like that one. Uh, you, you're easy, easy, easily entertained. By I am. These. I do love a good dad joke, and um, but also I feel like the ones that people are sending through, Father Rob, they're better than the ones that we were pulling. From yeah, that's right. So we have to encourage them. <laughs> send Keep us some good them. ones. Send us some good ones. <laughs> a blessing this week, Georgia. Blessing. So this one's a um, a really good blessing. So um, this is from Carol, and Carol sent it through on Instagram, and she said. One of the beautiful young women in her family was expecting a baby and at 16 weeks the scan wasn't looking very good. The baby had fluid at the base of the brain and the medical opinion that the baby would be born with severe organ damage or would be disabled or die within hours. It was a tough time and no matter what way this young mum could, would go, um, she needed a second opinion. She was turned away from the birth clinic and... The doctor, the time was moving very quickly. We were praying with our um, family and our friends and our priests, including Father Rob. And at 37 weeks, another scan uh, exclaimed loud, the doctor exclaimed loudly, the operator said, um, this is extremely rare, but the fluid has completely gone. Uh, we are so thankful for God's miracle. And a healthy little girl was born just a few weeks later. Amen. Oh, that's so Praise God. A beautiful <gasps> baby. I've seen photos of this oh, baby on Instagram. Beautiful wow. baby. Like, there are... I, some would say all babies are beautiful, but I I don't know. I'm sorry. I, maybe I'm causing controversy. Some babies you are not beautiful. <laughs> we won't be putting that as a quote on the Instagram, no, that's no, for no. sure. I don't know. So as long as they're beautiful to their parents, that's what's most that's important. That's all that matters, their parents and to God. <laughs> but it's true. Not all babies look beautiful. All babies are beautiful, but not all babies look beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to let that go. Put the microphone down. <laughs> Step away from the microphone. Step away from the microphone. <laughs> no, it's okay. funny because it's true. No, it's funny. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I'll just let you look like the bad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For, for all those not so beautiful babies out there, we love you. God loves you. We love you, you too. That's most important. 
<laughs> okay, faith and works. We're talking about controversy. An age controversy. old. This is a controversy. It is issue. a massive controversy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Starting with Luther and beyond that, and uh, uh, my Pentecostal friends, um, uh, th- this is where there's a big um, change, a big difference between. Mm, not a div- mm-hmm. yeah, but a big a difference in yeah. understanding. Now, if I were to ask the most evangelical of qu- Christians, is that um, is it faith alone or is it works? Everyone would say yes. You need to respond to God's grace. That's great. Everyone needs to respond to God's grace. But yes. where we differ is in the mm. idea of justification. Um, that's a big theolo- theology. Okay, the theology of justification. That justification does originate come from God. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, justification, just because you were saved once and you mm-hmm. gave your life to Jesus and you walked to the altar and you gave your life and doesn't mean you're still saved. Yes. Just because you, they, they um, Pentecostals tend to use this language and this is great. You know, are you saved? Yes, you yeah, gave your I'm life saved. to Jesus. Then. But just because you gave your life to Jesus mm-hmm. in 1999 and. Mm-hmm today you're not still responding to that grace and you Mm -hmm. you might have in a sense lost that salvation because we need there's not only faith and grace but we have to Mm -hmm. respond to that grace we have to respond to 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 that and this is what faith does faith draws us moves us into action doesn't it yeah, and I was thinking about this because I was thinking, well, you could look at it, you know, faith or works, but you could also look at them that they go hand in hand. Like, if you know that God loves mm. you and you have that faith, then you're moved, your heart is moved to want to help people. And, you know, I remember when I didn't know God's love as much, I wouldn't feel as, as compelled to reach out. But now I have that. It's a little bit more of a God's put on my heart, you know, help this person, help this person. It's more something that I think is literally coming from God. So it's that beautiful thing of if you've got faith in God and you know Jesus is with you, you're going to want to help people. You're changed, you know. God makes all things new in your life. You want to help people more. And what what I'm saying about helping people, I think it points to, you know, in the, the Bible points to what Jesus really wants us to do, like these works. It says help the poor, help the sick, visit the prisoners, visit the widows, like, he literally said, doesn't say just chill out and do nothing as long as you know me. It's like, do these things, like be my hands and feet, you know. And I was thinking about what Mother Teresa says that, you know, she said uh, it's, um, she's not exactly sure what heaven will be like, but she knows that when we die and it's time for God to judge us, he will, He he. it's not necessarily he'll ask how many good things we've done, but he'll say, how much did you love me? How much did you love others? And how did you use your gifts to serve me? So it's this it's it's more like a relationship that, that extends to other people. That's how I see it. But we ha- still have to do things. We exactly. Can't just, it's not just belief isn't enough, I think. Okay, I talked to you. Yes. Too much now. And exactly. And he's no no good. And <laughs> this is what God does. He has shown us and this is uh, I think it's taken from the book of Micah. It says this. Mm-hmm. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. What is good? Okay, God mm-hmm. is good. And mm-hmm. what does the Lord require of you? God requires one thing of us and requires mm-hmm. this of us to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So this is the works we're talking about, that we have received God's grace and mm-hmm. out of that grace, out of that love, in faith, mm-hmm. we're caused to work. Now, I can say I'm saved and I receive Jesus, but if I'm not responding to that grace, then I'm not mm-hmm. living in salvation. I'm not, I need to correspond. I need to respond to salvation. I need to cooperate with the salvation of God. Yes. And once I cooperate with that, I become the life and the love of Jesus in this world. And this is what also we'll be judged by. We'll be judged by Mm -hmm. not us giving our lives to Jesus, but how we Mm -hmm. responded to that grace or how we rejected that grace. Yes. And this is, I think, how the sacraments can help us so much, you know, Mass and Confession and the Eucharist and these, they they strengthen us. So it it becomes less about you have to do this, whereas you need it for your walk with Jesus, you know. Because the world is so noisy, there's so many things pulling us in different directions, whether it be friends, family, or opportunities, and we really need to, we need um, God's grace, but also having faith, but also, yeah, those sacraments and the strengthening so that we can do good works for God. You know? And yes, exactly. So we really have no yeah. excuse, Georgia. This is the thing, <laughs> yeah. is that God gives us so much grace yes. to respond in faith. 
Yes. Like as you said, and the, and I believe in the Catholic Church, we have more grace than anyone else, more grace than mm -hmm. anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd say it's the same God, it's the same it's the same Holy Spirit. But you yeah. mentioned the sacraments; those are ordinary means, like <laughs> tangible ways in which God is present in the Eucharist, in in, in the the reconciliation. That these incredible, and this is why we're missing out on so much grace mm -hmm. during this pandemic. Now, God's mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is still there. Salvation is still there. God's mercy is still there. God's justification is still there. Yes. But, man, as soon as you can, run to the altar. Run to confession. Run to receive mm -hmm. the grace of God because we need this grace. And part of the works as yes. well is responding to God's grace, is getting to our knees and, and asking God for forgiveness through the sacrament of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. It's getting to our knees and receiving the Eucharist, adoring the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. It's getting anointed when we're sick and receiving this incredible, mm -hmm. extraordinary grace. Yes. Like, and it's just mind-blowing to think and how, telling people yeah, how what, much. Yeah. Yes. Keep going. Sorry. I, I was Yes, you were saying like telling people it's 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 also sharing with others, eh? Yeah, I was really thinking about this one day. Like, I wonder that you know, it's this is not a pressure thing for people like listening. But when I die, if God's going to say, you know, hey, you had that next door neighbor, or you had that friend at work, and you know, you didn't directly tell them your your story, or tell them how Jesus had changed your life, or tell them how you know the the way. To, to heaven or things not that I know everything but really the truth that we know you know and I think yes. about that sometimes because I don't want to be too full on with my friends I'm st I try and just live out my faith and then if they ask me I'm like yeah I'm Catholic I'm Christian but is that enough I need you know sometimes I get those opportunities to share but you don't always get them and so that's you know I I'm interested in that anyway exactly and i think our, our yeah. joy in heaven will be less yeah. if there are <laughs> less people there I, look honestly yeah. i don't know if this is correct catholic mm -hmm. teaching but i believe mm -hmm. that one of the things god is going to ask us when we see god face to face yes. is not only come in come and celebrate come and enjoy this this yes. um, celebration this feast but he's going to mm -hmm. look at me and he's going to say rob rob who did you bring with you yeah who did you bring with you did you That's come it. alone and many of us, mm. when we come alone, maybe we'll be let in. Of course we'll be let in, but our joy will be less. Yeah. I, I believe this, you see, because we... Uh, now, it's probably not theologically correct to say our joy will be less because our joy will be overflowing, will be full. Mm. But one of the questions Jesus will tell us is, who mm. did you bring with you? Did yeah. you come alone? And I, God, Lord Jesus, please let me not come alone. Let yes. me not come alone. I want to bring people with me yeah whatever it takes yeah and not be afraid to tell people about it and it's you know it's okay some people are going to go oh whatever or some people are going to go well i want to know more about this mm. and in either case finding opportunities to tell people in a gentle way because jesus is gentle but you know it's not too pushy but also it, it's authentic and real like not being um embarrassed about it like just saying, yes. hey, this is I know something. I know about Jesus and he can change your life. And just being like, can I tell you about this? And they can choose to respond in any way that they want. Yeah, you know? Do it as though, as though their salvation yeah. depends on it. Yes. As, as though right. their life, their eternal life depends on it. I yeah. mean, just because you don't want to offend someone, you're going to let them miss out on eternity. That's crazy. That's crazy. On that crazy note... We'll finish off with um, a little bit. Um, we have a little bit of a challenge for you. Yes. Um, oh. Something of ways you can get in touch with us. Is that right? Yes, um, that's right. Georgia, did you forget challenge? the challenge? No, I've got it right here. Oh, I'm okay. At it. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> What's this week's challenge? Okay, this week's challenge is what um, actions or works can you carry out to live and love more like Jesus? Hey, what actions can it's you... A big challenge carry out to live and love like Jesus. Yes. Ouch. I'll have to think about that Ouch. as well. Yes, how I can do that better. Yes, we can do, all Father. do that better. I'm yes, joking, I'm joking. we all do. <laughs> Absolutely. No, just, yeah, no, we do. Um, not me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> That's yeah. just silly. There's so many things I can think of. And if you, um, and the other thing is that if people, if people want to send through their blessings as well, we'll read them out. Yes. So make sure you go to frgministry.com forward slash podcast. You can yes. send us an email there or at podcast at frgministry.com. Yes. Um, social media. Yes, Catholic influencers. influencers underscore. That's Instagram. So Catholic Instagram. influencers underscore Facebook. Yeah. It's Catholic Facebook. influencers. 
We'd love, love, love to be in touch. We had a, an amazing competition. We yes. should announce the winner. I should have the details, but we'll have to announce it next week. We'll, we would have by the time you... We, we have already contacted the winner. So, um, yeah. But so also... follow us and, you know, comment and say hi and inbox and just keep in contact. because Absolutely. Great. We want to be in touch. Also, yes. we have another podcast that is My Homilies through our Catholic yeah. Influences, The Homilies as well, Father Rob mm-hmm. Gallia's Homilies, Google that. Mm-hmm. Also, on um, if you're listening to this podcast, please give us a five-star rating, write, write a review. That boosts us as well, allows us to reach more people. The platform actually raises us um, as we get better reviews. So please keep Google giving review, reviews. Rob, Google, just, Google yeah. podcast on um, iTunes. iTunes is the one that responds most and fastest to okay. reviews. Spotify, all of that. Just give us reviews. Um, and we'd love um, we love to increase our platform to reach out to people. Once again, thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. Please recommend this to your friends. Send it to people who you think will be um, encouraged and blessed by this. If you are blessed by this ministry, please go to frgministry.com forward slash donate. And that way you can support this ministry and the work we're doing. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you, Father Rob. God bless. (laughs) God God bless you. And we'll see you again, hear from us again next week. Yes.